From the earliest exponents, the war photographer has sought to bring us images of the most extreme of human experience. From John Burke, documenter of the second Afghanistan campaign, to the more contemporary work of that same seemingly perpetual front line, photographers have provided us with the sense of involvement. The viewer delivered to the moment as lived by its participants. The split second of the shutter click, linking them forever with the subject there. Grief, anxiety, vulnerability, looking with them towards an always uncertain future and the stark possibility of death. But the question of representation in imagery persists. What is the veracity of what we are being shown? Is the image being presented to us true? This is what I would like you to consider. In being presented with an, an image, an account, a story, we are being presented with an idea of truth. But what is true? And why is the idea of truth something that preoccupies us? It's Jess. She's asking to see you. I don't know. Look, I know she's in critical. Might be tough seeing her like that. But things are coming back to her. I think that's why she's asking for you. services in demand. Yeah, summer colds are back and a uh, few new patients as well. Ah, thank you, Ruth. Test results are in. Ooh, thank you, Hot Lips. You are. Hot Lips Uno. MASH! <laughs> Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. Hot Lips was the nurse. You've never seen MASH? No, Luke Bangus. Oh, I'm going to lend you the box set. Hot Lips. She could be a role model for you. Very into discipline. I've really never seen Mash. Yeah, of course I have. Just don't want Charlie calling me hot lips. Oh. <laughs> I suppose houseman must be a bit like it. The helicopters and... Yeah, a bit. I'm sorry, I'm I'm not trying to No, no, it's okay, yeah, it's a bit like that. You know, casualties coming in, all the tension while you're waiting for the hello and Hello. Helicopter. Oh right. Certainly got the lingo. <laughs> It is amazing the recovery they make there, isn't it? It is. Some take longer than others. There's this one lad. Not doing too well. Oh, physically he's coming along. Mm. He was wounded trying to get help for someone who was shot by a sniper. Brave. Yeah, it is. Except that every time he tells the story, it's different. Like he's trying to piece it together. And... Isn't that something that they all have to do? No, it's not that he can't remember. It's like he's trying to recall how he pieced it together last time. I just don't know why. Brought someone to see you. Jess? Chris. Chris! Hi, Heston. Oh, hello. Oh, this is Simone from college. I bumped into her in the common room. She said she wanted to tag along. Right, Hess? So, um, Simon, do you have an interest in old masters? Normally got a ceiling of 25, but you never know. <laughs> you? Discipline? Yeah, I know I'm hardly the queen of rules and regs, but honestly, the way they run that ward is amazing. You're not going to go green, are you? What, and ride a bike to work? That's what the Americans say when you join up. Join up? Seem to be the army's greatest admirer. Yeah, and I admire Birmingham City. Doesn't mean I'm going to put a blue shirt and have a crack at the villa. It must be doing something for you because you're buzzing. Mm. It's the best thing I've ever done. How about you? Me? Yeah, what's giving you a buzz these days? Oh, kind of buzz free, I suppose. It's the same dream I've been having over and over. 
children in need. Sergeant Major Curtis running around the perimeter of Bastard dressed as a baby. Must be the drugs. Make him stick to Shandy. I know what you did. You told me. Who? Colonel Barker. And you. He got away. He got help. So what are you? Sniper could have slotted you as well. Maybe I was just faster than you. Not fast enough to get out of the way of that IED. Yeah. Sorry. What for? Stopping me bleeding out? No, it wasn't. It was everything. Thanks, mate. Better let you get some rest before the Colonel has us out of here on a tri star back to Kandahar. Don't forget I'm here. You just get better. So, we're, um, we're doing you an insurance medical. Standard one for my agency. Requirements are all there. Mm, rather short notice. Goes with the camera game. Ah, photography. Mm. Weddings? Weddings, funerals, famine, war. Actually, only one wedding, Uzbekistan. Father-in-law shot the groom. Definitely one for the album. Ah. So, uh, when was your last medical? Seven months ago, before my last assignment. Which was? Helmand. Right. A bit lively, huh? Yeah? Couple of near misses with IEDs. Sniper had a go. They don't count a blue helmet as a non combatant <clears throat> in those parts. But I got back in one piece, which is more than some of the battalion I was with. So, do you want me to strip? Um, let's just begin with blood pressure. And um, here we have Botticelli's Madonna and Charlie. Doesn't look much like Madonna to me. Well, Madonna here refers to... Oh, the... Kidding, Hess. She's the virgin, not like a virgin. Very good. Right. So, in this campus... Mind. With Madonna's experience, at least she'd know how to hold a baby. Well, well, in terms of composition, uh, we can see that the Virgin Mary is presenting the uh, Christ child forward to his cousin, John the Baptist. Thought John the Baptist was an old geezer with a beard? His whole life, obviously, the... Uh, it's a prophetic encounter. The divine infants are setting out on their spiritual mission. To boldly go where no divine infants have gone before. Uh, well, let's not confuse the theological with the cosmological. Now, in terms of its execution, the handling of the light allows the figures to be fully modelled, which would suggest that this is largely the work of Botticelli himself. Hi! Hey, they lapped up the stuff about Eve Arnold. Combination of notoriety and glamour. Shame I can't find that picture of her in Hitler's bath. Kelly? Right, so general requirements. That's fine. You have no recent injuries and no diagnosed life-threatening conditions. It's, uh, it's a question of your diabetes. What about it? Your type 1. You need to maintain your insulin routine. And you're in a war zone. I managed fine, and it's never been an impediment to getting insurance. No, no, and um, it's not in this case either, so that's all right. So we asked a copy for you, there's one for us, and one for the insurance company. Yes, can you fax that to them? No, yeah, I'll get the receptionist to fax it for you. No, can you do it? She's perfectly competent. Yeah. It needs to get there today. I'm flying out this mm. afternoon. I'd prefer it if you did it yourself. Well, since you ask so nicely, why not? Great. Thank you, Chris. I know it must have been difficult. It's worse when I saw her wounded. Of course. But it's down to you that she made it back. And the medics and the guys at the hello. Well, that all followed. It was your intervention that counted. See how much it meant to her. Fantastic to see her so engaged, especially when she'd just come round. She's tough. Well, even the tough ones need help. Sometimes more than the others. You made a real difference going to see her. No. You could hear it in her voice. You gave her a real lift. You're her hero. And uh, Isaac blessing Jacob by Matthew Stone. 
Matthias Stop. Sounds like a cult figure from German Electronica. Tonight we have Kraftwerk with backing vocals from Matthias Storm. Oh, Matthias, and actually he was Dutch. Maybe a DJ then? In the house tonight, direct from Amsterdam, we have Paul van Dyck and Matthias Storm. I thought he was born in Utrecht. And Paul van Dyck is German. <laughs> like it matters. Some things do matter. Well, provenance is important. Peyton, get you all emotional then. Actually, it does. Storm's influence. It's only paint. It's paint replicating light. Indeed. For example, Stom here is employing... Chiara Scuro. The manipulation of light and shade to create a three-dimensional sense. Swap much. It's better than blind ignorance. Well, blindness is used here as an allegory. And it's really casts a very important light on the significance of the painting. Excuse me. Could you take our photo for us, please? Oh, uh, I know. No, sorry. I'm it's just... very easy. Just press it on. Oh, there. yeah, I know. I know how to use a camera. <clears throat> Can't do screens. I need a viewfinder. Okay. Boring. Why is it boring? Just some geezer, isn't it? Well, actually, it's just some geezer who's been tagged. What do you mean, tagged? The inscription at the bottom is like a graffiti artist tag. How? Non alata, not otherwise, saying that without the artist, in this case Bellini, this moment would not have been preserved. So you're saying that's just like a graffiti artist? I'm saying it's a similar impulse, the need to witness, to leave an imprint for posterity. You're just trying to be down with the kids? Well, I've been accused of many things in my Simone, time. Heston has given up his time to be here. So have we. Uh, no, you were moping around in the common room when you asked what I was doing. When you said you wanted to come along, I thought you were interested. Didn't think it'd be like this. What, rooms full of fantastic art and someone with real knowledge giving their time to explain it? No. Rooms full of boring pictures of dead people. It's only boring because you don't understand it. You don't understand that these pictures are alive? The boy in that portrait is still alive and you don't understand that he's alive because Bellini painted him? And if you don't want to understand, then I think you should leave. Because I actually want to listen to what Heston has to say. Fine. Have fun with your crusty old master. Loser. You never told me about an assignment. It came up. You're not well enough to travel. I've been cleared to travel. Cleared? Who by? The doctor. Which one? Bradfield. He gave me a full medical. I'm fine. Even your diabetes? Fine. But it hasn't been fine. Didn't you tell him about everything that's been happening? I explained everything. He didn't have a problem. Why did you always... Kelly! No, you always... Kelly! Kelly. La nuit est contre-révolutionnaire. Hey. It's the graffiti spray during the 1968 Paris uprising. Boredom is counter-revolutionary. I'm surprised you knew what a tag was. Well, aging I may be, but I'm yet to be pickled by Damien Hirst. An old warrior, follower of Rembrandt. Yes, your friend Simone would say that Rembrandt was taking the day off. <laughs> he looks like he's remembering. Well, they say there's nothing closer than a soldier in his memories. I wonder if Daz is remembering me. Is that that chap at the party? Are you an item? Oh, no, nothing like that. We... we email. Sure it's a welcome correspondence? Well, all his emails are about his mates. I think I know everything about them. Tomo's addicted to Top Gear, and Corporal Stewart is engaged to a manicurist from Barnsley, and Taffy Phillips gets up to no end of mischief in Cardiff. Well, according to Jimmy, it's a very good place for mischief. <laughs> They're all planning a big night out when they get back from leave. Maybe that's what our old warrior's remembering. A big night out in Amsterdam with Hiet from Utrecht and Theodore from Harlem, pouring libations on old friends forged in fire and flame. It's the same thing with you as always. What is? Jealousy. Jealousy? Yes. I go into the field and risk my neck to take some actual images, and you just sit here and pontificate. Well, that's not fair. The theories of Roland Barton, Susan, sometimes don't count for much when you're trying to capture the aftermath of an IED. 
What's the latest theory have to say about the cultural significance of a boy with his legs blown off? Or a five-year-old killed by a drone? What are the signifiers for those? Oh, you can't make those comparisons. What, between the theory and the factual? Between a slideshow in a warm lecture room and a filthy ditch in Hellman? No, you're just... What about the young officer you photographed that morning at breakfast joking with his sergeant about the football and then the next time you see him, that sergeant is carrying him dead in his arms. You catch that in the viewfinder. Click. The mouth open in anger and the tears, his body armour covered in his officer's blood. You chose it. It chose me. Those images chose me. I chose you. I chose you and I have to live with you being away. Watching the news every day, every bulletin, waiting for the announcement, British photographer killed. I needed to go. That's what you say every time. I need to go this time. Oh, you've been to Afghanistan twice. It's not Afghanistan, it's the Yemen. The Yemen? Agency commissioned a feature on the insurgency. You can't stop me going! When have I ever been able to stop you going? And just give me your blessing. No. Not this time. I don't want you to go this time. Gaz did mention one boy. They called him Metal Mickey because he had a brace on his teeth. He got hit by one of those rockets. Him and a corporal. Was he killed? He was 18. They used to laugh at him because he always had to show ID when he went into a pub. I reckon he's also remembering some of his friends who were killed. I think so. I've never really thought about what it's actually like. I've seen it on the telly. Gaz never really tells me. Uh, the things he's seen, he probably can't put it into words. The grim clash of battle. Seconds of desperation. Friends suddenly gone. The wounded change forever. We still serve. That war has cast aside. That bomb and bullet and fate and chance and blinding heat and burning flash have thrown bloody to one side. We still serve. We still serve. Who stumble and clutch and cry and fall and flail, limbs torn, gone, battle-blown, minds longing for just one further step more. We still serve. We still serve that would return as some can never return, that would take the same heedless, cautious step as those for whom heat and flash were end and take that step again against foe with friend. We still serve. I can't discuss Miss Bryant with you. Why not? Patient confidentiality, even though you may be a friend. I'm not her friend. Well, even more so. I'm her wife. Right, I see. No, I don't think you do see. This morning you signed an insurance document for her saying she was fit to travel. Yes. What about the fact that her diabetes is getting worse? That's news to me. Bladder problems, fainting spells. Wouldn't those indicate something? Possibly, but she didn't mention any of them. Oh, so you took her on trust? I'm not psychic. If a patient chooses not to reveal certain symptoms, I can't be expected to make a judgement. Well, I expect you to exercise a duty of care. It's not as if she's taking a long weekend. She's going to the Yemen. Wasn't there something that... Yes, there was. What? I saw her in the park. About lunchtime, after I'd done her medical. I noticed that she was reluctant to take a photograph when someone offered her a camera. Oh, she's a professional. She can be prickly about that kind of thing. No. She went to take the photograph, and then she appeared to be in difficulty. With the camera? With her vision. She has type 1 diabetes. You think it's affecting her eyes? Diabetes can lead to retinopathy, which is a hemorrhaging of the blood vessels in the eyes, leading to blurred vision. And you didn't spot this in the medical? I told you, she said nothing about any problems with her vision. Above all, she was in a terrible hurry to get out of here because she said she had a flight later today. Today? 
She says she's flying today. I can talk to you. Very intelligently for the past few hours. No, I mean, I can talk to you about things, about art. <laughs> Mom will probably say something like, oh, that's nice, love, and then get on with the cleaning, and Dad, well... Well, your father's a practical man. <laughs> he thinks a good piece of art is a mugshot on Crime Watch that gets someone nicked. Well, it may not be art in the strictest sense, but it's certainly a contribution to the public good. And your lecturer? He thinks Andy Warhol's ancient history. Oh, well, Banksy is revolutionary. Actually, he thinks Banksy's a sellout. He reckons the most relevant street artists are the ones who don't get paid. Well, the art, the commerce debate. Tell him to look up Lorenzo de' Medici. Bankers were as unpopular then as they are now, but he was also a philanthropist who facilitated the Renaissance. He had Michelangelo as a lodger. <laughs> Imagine him chiseling all night. Yeah, there was probably some family descent as he lugged another block of marble to his room. <laughs> At least you know who Michelangelo was. And not a martial arts cartoon reptile. You know, there's going to be a manga-influenced art exhibition at the College Gallery. Maybe... no. Maybe what? I was going to say maybe we could go, but... I might find it interesting. Really? If not interesting, certainly instructive. If not instructive, it will surely be illuminating. <laughs> There's always something you can learn. Always. I am in a hurry. Keys. Um, I can't find my keys for the car. You're going to have to take me to the airport. I'm playing golf. Okay. okay. Can't we find a quicker route? I'll do my best, love. Going. Hi. Someone's happy. Did you have a good day? I discovered the true value of art. Oh, very nice. Hey, speaking of art, your dad's dead chuffed. He's had one of his photo fits accepted onto Crime Watch. <laughs> Do you think anyone will recognise him? One of his villains. That looks like half the photo fits on Crime Watch anyway. Oi! found the letter. Is that really how you were going to say goodbye? How else could I do it? What, by telling me you had no intention of coming back? That you were certain you were going to die? Photographer's intuition. I've seen plenty of you. But you were going to get yourself killed. That's why you wanted to make sure of the insurance. I was thinking of you. No, you weren't. You were thinking of yourself. War photographer's death, camera in hand. Last frame showing your blood in the dust. What were you planning? Walking into the crossfire? Stumbling, stumbling into the crossfire. That's what the blind do. Well, Dr Bradfield says that if the retinopathy hasn't it's progressed... It's not retinopathy. It's something called optic atrophy. The nerves connecting my eyes to my brain are withering. <laughs> I'm going blind. But you've been sticking to the regime, taking the insulin. That's not just type 1 diabetes. It's Wolfram's. <laughs> Wolfram syndrome, it's fairly rare genetic disorder can cause diabetes and loss of vision and and it's incurable I 
long have you known? Since I was a kid. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I always hated to be limited by anything. Well, by me? No, no, no. I live by seeing through images. Without my sight, I'm nothing. I can help. <laughs> you can't be my eyes. Well, yes, I can. Stay with me and I can help. Sir? Chris! I won't say don't get up. Hear that you visited Sergeant Faraday this morning. Sir? Must have been glad to see her. Yes, sir. Now, this might come as a shock, but I've recently received some information on the incident involving yourself and Sergeant Faraday. The operational honours list has just been published. In light of your actions on that day, your OC has recommended you for the award of the Military Cross. Good incentive to work on your fitness. See you on your feet and marching to receive it. Congratulations, Lance Corporal. Fully deserved. Major Rudolph's butchering for final assessments today. And if you get the OK, we're going to Finley Court tomorrow. Tomorrow? He has been totally cosseted here. But the mental health nurse said he was ready to go. Well, medically, yes. You want our image to come on holiday with you? We'll think of it as a further education. A budding Leonardo needs to see more. What could be better than Florence? Lucky little madam. When a slim celebrity dies, Dr. Sloan suspects.